Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at exam technique. You're likely to be anxious at the start of the exam. Scan the paper through quickly and decide which question to tackle first. Decide which question you can do your best and do it first. This will help boost your confidence. You want to settle down and be calm, especially for a coding question. Time management is key. You have 80 minutes and 80 marks in a paper, so you can spend roughly one minute per mark. Don't spend five minutes on a single mark. It's just not worth it. Move on, do the next question. Use a highlighter pen to highlight important keywords from the question. This will help avoid careless errors. After you've finished a question, Reread it and ensure that you've actually answered the question correctly. Make sure you, that you've answered the question set and not the question that you wanted to have been set. Do not waste time in the exam. Always reread and check and add to your answers if you have any time left over at the end. Make sure you have at least five minutes at the end of the exam to go over everything. Don't spend the last few minutes doodling. That's not going to help your grade. It just makes it look like you don't care about the exam and your result. Don't forget to dry run your own algorithms and check that it works by producing a trace table of the contents of the variables. It only takes a minute or two, and if you've got some time, use it wisely. Again, we're trying to avoid careless or silly mistakes. Ask for rough paper if you need it to help you work out algorithms or do some trace tables. Remember to visualize an array by writing the index numbers alongside the headings. So if it starts at 0, write 0, 1, 2, 3. If it starts at 1, write 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Again, this will just help you avoid making silly mistakes later on when you're answering questions. Again, with array questions, read the question carefully and work out whether that first element is index position 0 or index position 1. It will always give you an example in the question, so read it carefully. Remember, a function returns an answer, a procedure does not. Read questions about subprograms carefully to make sure you know which one to write. Is it a function? Is it procedure? Only code what you need to. If you're asked to write a function, just write the function. You don't need to write the whole main program. In array questions, you're not going to be asked to create the array from the exam question. You're just going to be asked to manipulate it in some way. Always check your binary and hex answers by reversing the process or converting to decimal and checking the answer. You should never make a mistake with these questions. You should always double check it and know that you're right before moving on to the next question. You cannot use any language specific methods. So for example, in Python, there's lots of great methods built into the language, especially with arrays or string handling. You can't use dot sort, dot shuffle, dot add, dot remove, etc. You have to use standard loops and string handling methods that are available in every language. Don't get your div and mod confused. Remember that 10 div 3 equals 3 and 10 mod 3 equals 1. Always contextualize your answers and use the person's name, job role, company profile in your answer. Very important, have a go. Do not leave any blank answers. Even if you get a difficult coding question, you're not sure how to answer it, you can easily pick up two or three marks in these coding questions just for getting the input correct, the right print outputs, maybe just setting up the loop correctly. Even if you're missing a lot of the logic, well, you've got your inputs right at the start, you've printed the answer at the end, and you've set up the loop correctly, so that's two marks out of four, or three marks out of five, even though you haven't done the complicated stuff. Some generic advice that's useful in any situation, any exam. When you get a question, read it carefully. What is the context of the question? What relevant information have you been given in the question? What are you being asked to do? What is the command word from the question? State, describe, explain, etc. They're all different. They're not chosen at random. There's a reason why it's using that particular command word in the question. What do you know that can help you answer the question? You'll have covered the entire course in class. You'll have revised thoroughly, I hope. 
Therefore, when you get any question, you must know how to answer it. You must know something. So even if you don't think you do, just take a moment, calm down. You do have that knowledge there. Put it on paper. They're not going to ask you anything in the exam that you won't have covered at some point. When you've finished answering the question, have you satisfied the examiner? For example, a five marker, have you made at least five points? If you haven't made five points, you're not going to pick up all the marks. Common mistakes, not reading the question properly, not finishing the paper because you've messed up on the timing, ignoring the mark scheme, allocate those marks. It's asking me for one advantage, but it's two marks. Therefore, I have to explain that advantage and contextualize it in order to get both marks. Avoid repetition. You're not going to get extra marks for making the same point multiple times and slightly rewording it. Don't miss part of the question. If it says describe and explain something, don't forget the explain part. On the day of the exam, make sure you're thoroughly prepared. Make sure you're trying to reduce your anxiety. Make sure you are ready and confident and good to go in that exam. There's some kind of generic advice here. Take a look at this. Do what works for you. Command words. I mentioned these earlier. In the exam, each question will have a command word. These command words are carefully chosen by the exam board because they signal how you're expected to answer each question. Does it say describe, explain, annotate, etc.? You've got to understand what those words mean and how they're different from each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through all the command words. I've got the document from the exam specification from the, sorry, the uh, J277 specification. I've got all the list of command words and I'll just go through them very quickly. I'm not going to read them all out with the explanations, but here they are. Here's the first set of them. Again, pause it, take a look, make sure you understand these. Keep going. There's a few more here. Again, how are they different from each other? They all have a very specific purpose. When the exam board choose justify or list or outline, there's a reason why they choose that word. And this is kind of the end of the list here. So you can see there are quite a lot of them, but it's worth spending a few minutes just studying them, making sure you're clear about what they mean. To help in that regard, I've created some very simple quizzes that you can do online. I'll put links to these in the description underneath here. You can take a couple of minutes. They're just simple matching activities, match the command word to the explanation, and that'll just help double check your knowledge on this because it is really important. And the number of students who make basic mistakes by misreading the keywords is usually quite large every time I mark a mock. So don't be that student. And finally, keep calm. Good luck in your exams.